yacht of the 80s. Well, hello and welcome to episode one of the brand new Beyond the 80 podcast brought to you by Neds. That's definitely a bit of an unusual time for everyone in the world right now and of, of course in rugby league as well. So we're here to keep you updated with all that's happening and hopefully have a bit of fun along the way. I'm your host, Dan Talendai. Each episode will be joined by some special guests right across the game of rugby league. And I'm very fortunate to be joined by two West Tigers players today with just a lazy 405 NRL games between them. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Chris Lawrence and Chris McQueen. Dan, how are you, mate? I'm very well, mate. I'm very well. Chris McQueen, how are you? I'm well, mate. Thanks for having me. Now, boys, we have discussed already just before we started recording, we do need a little bit of clarity around the Chris and Chris thing. Otherwise, it's going to be a very awkward 20 minutes for everyone. So, Chris McQueen, we've, we're going to go with you as Chris, and then Chris okay. Lawrence, we're going to go with you as Rowdy. Yeah, sounds good to me, mate. Can we just yep, clarify nice first and foremost, can we just clarify, where did Rowdy come from? Like, it's one of the great rugby league nicknames. Where did it actually begin? Oh, I think well, I think I've said it a few times, but I think the um, well, I came in debut when I was 17, and... Uh, still in high school, so and I'm not uh, definitely not an extrovert. So I was pretty quiet as a 17 year old kid coming into a first grade team. Um, and then I think it might have been my second year, and I basically I pretty much didn't talk even on the field. I didn't say a <laughs> word, didn't say a word at training. And then I think it was halfway through, I think my second year, and I probably had played 15, 20 games, and I just started talking like normal. I think I think I piped up in a meeting, and then everyone just looked back and go, whoa, 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 pipe down, rowdy. I think it was uh, Benny Galea. Um, gave him the name, goes, mate, you've got to settle down, mate. You've been a bit rowdy and he's just talking normal. So and it just sort of stuck, one of those things that, that stuck. So um, you can credit Benny Glee for that. Yeah, right, right. We'll know who to blame now. Chris McQueen, I imagine you've probably got Lightning, Lightning McQueen a few times. Yeah, I've um, got Lightning McQueen. The, the main one I sort of get um, here at the Tigers is Crispy, um, which obviously come from Crispy Cream, which sounds a lot like Chris McQueen. So yeah. um, that's the one we're running with at the moment. All right, so Crispy and Rowdy, too easy. Mm. Well, boys, obviously kind of a bit of a weird time at the moment, social distancing and, and isolation. I guess, uh, Rowdy, I might kind of kick it off with you. You're, you're at home, you're running your business, you've got a young daughter. How's kind of your routine been affected at the moment, mate, with, with all your training? Yeah, routine's um, at the moment pretty much out, out the window. I'm trying to, um, particularly as of this week, trying to get back in a bit of routine, get up you know, really early and get my training done in the morning because, um, yeah, as you said, during the day, it's... Um, uh, it's been a bit hectic. My wife um, still working uh, as a teacher, so um, I've I've got my daughter. Um, for that for that time, she's um, obviously at work, and uh, as I said, managing um, the business still, you know, got got to sort of help uh, run the business I've got on the side, and obviously that, like all small businesses, that's obviously taken um, its toll, and just try and implement some things that can, you know, try and minimise a lot of the risk and um, allow us to still um, keep functioning and and to. Um, survive during during this period. So doing that, and obviously on top of getting involved with the um, the, the chats and the conversations between the players' association and the NRL, um, uh, with everything that's going on. So yeah, busy time, and um, uh, it, it's uh, it's funny, well, not so much funny, but think how quickly sort of things change. I mean, you you look at sort of a couple of uh, weeks ago, and um, even even last week, um, just how quickly things evolve and change, and. Um, you know, now being in self-isolation, things changing so quickly, I think it's, uh, and I think I've found it's pretty important to get into that routine, So, which is probably one of the reasons I've now tried to get up and get um, my training done over, over morning just to try and get back to, I suppose, some normality while, while I'm here at home. Yeah, Crispy, I imagine it's pretty similar for you. I guess you get in such a routine of getting up early and going to training and getting into your prehab and your stretching before team meetings and then field. Like, you get in such a routine. What's it like when kind of all that stops? Yeah, it's it's, um, it's pretty difficult, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, for me, a little bit different. I don't have any kids, so um, there's no reason for me to set an alarm in the morning now. So I sort of wake up and... Um, yeah, as with Rowdy, just try to get my training done first thing in the morning. Uh, I went and had a run with uh, Paul Momorowski this morning and, yeah, just, just trying to find little ways to, I guess, stay sane and not go crazy. Obviously, we can't play golf anymore, so that was something that I was doing quite a bit of. So, um, yeah, it's just, I guess, trying to find those little wins, you know, bit of training, catching up on some Netflix. So, um, yeah, it is it is a, a pretty different time. And, um, you know, with, with the, I guess, the indefin- indefinite nature of what's going on, I'm just trying to find that motivation every single day to get up and do something is um, is probably the biggest struggle of all. Of all. 
Well, boys, I really appreciate you giving us a bit of time today on the Beyond the 80 podcast. Uh, thanks again to Neds for sponsoring each and every episode of the show going forward. I've got a bit of a fun one lined up uh, just for a little afternoon here. We'll touch on a little bit of news, then we'll get into a little bit of fun segments with both your boys right after this. And this is where Tom will drop the first ad in. Yep. Oh, All right. All right. <laughs> Great. Ned's way. Yeah. <laughs> So, all, right, all good. Well, thank you for joining us again on the Beyond the 80 podcast with our special guest for episode one in Chris Lawrence and Chris McQueen. Uh, guys, obviously plenty of news kind of floating around at the moment. There's a couple of updates uh, as a result of, of COVID-19. I would just want to quickly touch on a little bit of that. I guess you guys, both as senior players, have been across a fair bit of that, both of how it affects you and the playing group. Uh, Chris, you've probably been heavily involved with the Rugby League Players Association. I'm going to, to Chris Lawrence here. I guess what's those conversations been like and, and kind of how's that been received amongst the, the players throughout this? Yeah, look, the, the conversation has been really good, both obviously with um, the, the number of chats we've had as um, a player delegate group with the, with the RPA um, officials and, and obviously then with the NRL. And um, obviously we're just trying to work out um, what's the mo- best and most sustainable way that um, can allow obviously uh, us players, the clubs and, and the game to get through um, this period in the best uh, best way possible because um, th- there's everyone's affected in some um, way, shape or form, but um, we've got to ensure that um, we can all get through this period and, and make sure we come out the other end. So uh, a lot of those conversations uh, were centred around that. And, and then look, just looking at the worst case, um, again, we want to be optimists and hoping that we can get back to, to playing this year, but we've got to obviously put things in place um, for the realisation that if we don't come back um, this year, what that looks like and um, can allow, again, us as players, but also the NRL and clubs can, to plan for, for that period um, if the, the case is we don't come back. Mm. Obviously, there is kind of no confirmed return date for the 2020 season yet, but it seems the NRL are pretty determined to kind of get back as, as soon as possible and play as, as many games as we can. There's a, a talk of a potential even a wild card system in place for the final series. Uh, Crispy, I guess, what's the, the feeling amongst the boys? I imagine you probably just want to get out there and kind of play as soon as it's A, safe, and then B, as, as soon as possible? Yeah, that's it. Um, you just said it. We, we want to make sure, first and foremost, that it's, uh, it's a safe um, safe environment for us to return back to playing. But, yeah, um, you know, to, to sort of play the first two rounds off the back of a really hard preseason for everyone, um, you know, it's not, not really ideal timing. But, um, yeah, the main thing is we just want to, I guess, keep our bodies prepared and, and um, be optimistic that the season will return. But... Um, as Rowdy said, you've got to prepare for the worst, um, but hope for the best. So, yeah, we're just maintaining, our, I guess, our fitness and our strength. And, um, you know, there's a lot of questions that, that we can't really answer at the moment. So it's, it's very much a waiting game. And um, we just have to see what, what, what happens, really. Rowdy, I'm not sure if you saw this yesterday. There's a bit of talk around about how long it would take for the players to be back at training before the season returns. Some had kind of said a couple of weeks. Some had said maybe as long as six weeks. I'm not sure if you saw these quotes on uh, NRL.com by a certain coach who may not be heavily involved with West Tigers um, in that he's the head coach, so just be careful what you say. (laughs) I just want to read this quote out for you. Uh, If we only had a week, we'd play in a week. Is it the right thing for their bodies? It's not ideal. Yes, our game would be, have to be handy to have a lead in and all those things. But if we got to September and it was getting tight and we were ready to go, I can't see the players not wanting to play. You're planning every day, whether that's recruiting, staff, different tiles of training, and overall just looking for an edge. Uh, mate, can you just confirm, has Michael Maguire actually taken a single day off yet? And is this going to be the most uh, comprehensive preview of the Bulldogs in round three ever when we do get back? <laughs> Um, I think short answer, no, I don't think he's, he's taking the day off. But I think that's the type of person Mad G is. He's such a hard worker. He's so passionate about what he does. Um, and uh, as I said, that probably comes out. And obviously that quote there. But I think there's a bit of truth to that as well. I think in the, and if you um, you know ask most of the playing group, you know, while the performance staff might um, say something differently, I think most players, if only given a week to get in there and play, if it was a difference between getting a season or not, every single player would put their hand up, understanding potential risks in that they might not have had the, the full match fitness or the, um, the conditioning in their body um, to do that. But in saying that, you know, we're all aware of that right now. So it's, I think the onus is on each individual, you know, from not only our club, but every other club to, to make sure if that time comes, we're ready. You know, it's, 
it's it's going to be very difficult to obviously do the the teamwork style training when we're not training as a team but um we as individuals and, and training at home we're going to do as much as we can uh, physically possible um to get our bodies ready and you know realistically uh, whether they sign off on having a week to go you know probably not but uh, i'm of the opinion you only need a couple of weeks um you know obviously you know the, the majority of guys play in that um that uh you know in first grade are guys who um, have played for a number of years, you know, even a few. So you do have that um, conditioning, um, a certain level of conditioning in your body. So it doesn't take that that long to get back. So uh, I'm sure um, pretty much every player um, could get themselves right and very quickly. Yeah, it sounds like Madge certainly kind of on the money with, with what he was saying there. Uh, Chris, you've obviously worked with, with Madge before when you're at, at South together and, and plenty of su- success there. Um, there's obviously lots of chat. He's an incredibly hard worker and all those things. But What's he like with that intensity? Is it just all about passion? Yeah, um, that's that's the way I always describe Madge. He's just extremely passionate and he just loves to win. Um, you know, not just for himself, but for the boys as well. Um, he just wants, a, I guess, a winning culture and a winning environment for everyone involved. Um, but yeah, one thing Madge has a saying where he, he always says, boys, if we have to go out and play on the road, we'll do it. So yeah, very much um, you know, off the back of what you just said there about, about Madge. Um, yeah, anywhere, anytime, um, you know, he, he's always ready to go. Well, I guess that's the mentality to kind of keep it throughout this time, anywhere, anytime, be ready to go. Well, yeah. well as we said, that's probably everything caught up in the news right now. Uh, up next, we'll kick it off with our first segment with a little, little game, topically, called You're the Coach. And that's a win. This NRL season, take it to the Neds level. You're listening to the Beyond the 80 podcast and we're into our first game for today called You're the Coach, uh, joined by Chris Lawrence and Chris McQueen. Boys, first and foremost, uh, any interest in coaching down the track at all? Too stressful or? Um, no, I'd like to keep my hair. Um, <laughs> I think um, either if you look at most coaches, um, either go grey or, or lose their hair very quickly. So, um, no, I, I don't have any uh, ambition to be a head coach. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same as Rowdy. Um, I don't think I have it in me to be a head coach. I could maybe do some assisting or, you know, something a little bit along that sort of lines. But, yeah, I certainly have no interest in head coaching. Well, I'm sure you could do this bit, guys. This bit, big part of coaching, as we know, is all about roster building, right? So I want you guys, let's just pretend, this is obviously a make-believe game, but you're the coach of a club that's got their salary cap in a really strong position and you can go out and buy whatever player in the market you want, all right? It's a bit of a dream team, all right? We're not going to pick any clubs in particular that that applies to. You can go out and kind of, you know, cherry pick the best players that you want, all right? So what I want you to do, there's uh, there's six spots in your roster that are up for grabs. So kind of three players each. But I just wanted a little bit of a twist for you, all right? You guys can't pick more than one player from the same club, okay? So, okay. all right. So we'll get a bit of a roll on here, right? You, you only- are we going positions? Are we, are we going, is, can we... Choose six people, so we've obviously got to do different positions. Though. Oh, yeah, we've got six positions lined up. We've got six positions okay. lined up for you. But the trick is, they're also, they, they've only got to play one game, right? So you can pick however old or young. Like, I want you to just try and pick, you know, you've got a grand final coming up. Who's the one player you'd want in this position, all right? So, Rowdy, I might kick it off with you, and you can have probably the hardest one in the game right now. Who's your fullback? If you've oh. got to pick a fullback in the game at the moment, one game... Who, who are you taking? There's so many good fullbacks, isn't it? Hmm. If I don't, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Well, I think you got to. Well, it doesn't matter who I say. If I don't, if I don't say Corey Thompson, he's going to be <laughs> he's going to be off me. <laughs> so just let's just put it out there. So I'm deliberately not going to choose him just so he can get the shits. Um, so I think I'd probably have to go. I think uh, you look at the last couple of years. I think James Tedesco is pretty hard to go against. Um, what he's done. Um, for both, obviously, the Roosters and uh, for New South Wales State of Origin. And um, obviously, I'm pretty, we're all pretty aware of how talented he is and obviously been him with his time with the Tigers. So, uh, he'd be a pretty handy uh, person to have. Yeah, it's a fair list of fullbacks to choose from at the moment, though. We're kind of blessed for talent in that regard in the comp. All right, so we've got James Tedesco as our fullback. That's a you know pretty, pretty standard one there, the New South Wales fullback. All right, Crispy... As a former outside back yourself, right? We'll get onto that. Yep. But a former outside mm-hmm. back, you can take any winger or centre. All right. So any winger or a centre. We only need one. Any. Just, you know, um, and again, of course, we should caveat all of this. Of course, you want to pick David Nofaluma and all the players at West Tigers, right? We know that yep. when all those things are there, right? But if, if you want to pick someone from another club, 
you are allowed. You just can't pick a Roosters player. Yeah, yeah, all good. I think, um, you know, for the sake of avoiding controversy, I'm just going to rule out picking a Tigers player as well. I think that was a smart decision. <laughs> um, I think, uh, I think any player, I think I'd pick um, Latrell Mitchell. I know he's obviously playing fullback at the moment, but he's played most of his career at centre. Um, and I think, um, you know, obviously played a lot of football with Greg Inglis and everyone does a comparison with them too. Um, but yeah, I certainly think um, on his day, he's, he's definitely one of the most dangerous centres in the game, um, if not the most dangerous centre in the game. So um, I, I think he's, he's a tough one to look past. Um, yeah, obviously he's copying a, a bit of a hard time in the media at the moment, but um, yeah, I can't look past him. When people compare him to GI, where does that come from? Is it just the way in which they can kind of just break a game open? Is that, is that kind of where it comes from? I think I think it's everything. Obviously, they're they're, they're both Aboriginal. Um, they they have very similar body shapes. They're both the same size. I think even even though they they run the way they carry the ball, the way they fend, I just think there's so many comparisons um, culturally, obviously, but also just just physically to look at them and to watch them play. I, I just think you know they're they're carbon copies of each other. Right, well, it's a fair side we're putting together straight and foremost. We've got James Desco at the back. We've got Latrell Mitchell as our outside back. All right, we'll go back to you, Rowdy. Yep. You can have any half or five-eighths. Now, that kind of opens it up. We only, need, we only need one playmaker. But, of course, now you can't take a Roosters player and you can't yeah. take a Rabideau. Who are you, who are you thinking well, about, half or a five-eighth? Um, again, four. See, yeah, this is where it gets interesting because do you want someone who's going to steer the ship or do you want someone who's going to break the game open? There's your hmm. the question. Well, that's, that's so, what you've got to think. I mean, you've got yeah. to go on the trail out the back. So, kind of, is, is that enough strike out there already or do you want... Yeah, what are you yeah. eating? You, you know what? I'm going to go with Cameron Munster. Ooh. I think, yeah. I think he's um, just again, got that ability as... Um, as Crispy said about uh, Latrell, just that ability to break the game open um, with individual brilliance. And I think over the last couple of years, uh, especially being in the Storm system, he's um, you know really developed sort of that kicking game uh, and been able to really um, pressure teams and squeeze teams um, uh, into a win. So I'm going to go with uh, yeah, going to go with Cameron Munster. Does he normally play your side of the field, or is he normally other side to you most times when he's on the field? Um, well, he does skip across the um, the field a lot a lot of the time too. So he's one of those players that if you're on the opposite side of the field, you, you really have to be aware that um, he's got the ball because um, he's so elusive and he's he's very strong. He's um, one of those guys who's deceptively strong and got a really good fence. So um, yeah, he's um, he's one of those players you have to be aware of. Um, obviously, his speed and strength. Mm, absolutely. All right. Well, now we get now we're getting into the tricky because we're taking out. Some of the big teams. So you can't have a Roosters player. You can't have a Rabbitoh. And you obviously now can't have a Melbourne Storm player. Chris McQueen, back mm-hmm. rower. You guys are both back rowers. Ooh. So there's, who's the standard? Who's the standard for back row other than you two, obviously? Who's the standard yeah. for who we're picking as our back rower? Oh, um, this is a really hard one. Obviously, some of the big teams have been taken out. Um, yeah. Right. So we're getting, um, this is where we start to get a bit challenging. Mm. Yeah, it's just you know we're, we're making yeah. it. I know it's a, I know it's a little. We're recording in the afternoon here. I know we're we're making you think a bit. But who? Yeah. Who, who's the standard? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pick a guy that um, you know, he's, he's obviously he's good on both sides of the field. He's he's a good defender, but extremely hard to handle when he's carrying the ball. That's Josh Papali. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. He's built like a bit of a bowling ball. Um, mm. Really hard to handle. Obviously, he's played for Queensland. He's played for Australia. So, um, yeah, I just think he's his intent with the ball is just um, yeah, he's he's almost unmatched. So, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with, with Josh. Nice call. Was he playing on the edge for you, Chris? When you when you were playing Origin, did you, did you guys play in that same kind of role together? Or yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was there. I was there first, and then um, he came and. Took my spot, so thanks yeah, for that. Right. Thanks for that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll move on. We'll just quickly move on there. All right, so we're, we're getting a fair side here. Two more spots to go. All right, Rowdy, you've played basically every position in the game. Have you ever played front row? Um, no, I don't think so. I think All right. I'll probably be throwing in there at some point. <laughs> I don't know, who knows? I can't All right, remember. well, you, you can think about it then. Who Who's your front row? Okay, we, we're a little – we're getting, you know, we're taking yeah. it from – no roosters forwards. No Melbourne forwards, no Souths forwards. 
and obviously no Canberra forwards. So that kind of rules out a fair few there. Who are you? Who are you thinking? We've kind of still got, you know, there's, there's still a kind of number of pretty good props out there. Obviously, who's who's tough? yeah, definitely. Yeah, oh, there's, there's as you said, there's, there's so many forwards that you know you still um, are out there. Um, you know, I want to go with um, Woodsy. I want to go Aaron Woods. Yeah, yeah I think um, going to get you. You got you got got a couple of guys that are obviously going to break the game open. Um, Woods has got a big engine. It's obviously going to keep going for you all day. Going to do the hard stuff um, up front. Got a good offload. So um, yeah, you got Teddy and Munster floating around with his offload, right yeah, arm smart. offload. So that's smart. yeah, I'm going Woodsy. Smart players. Only six on the field. So you know that's smart to have a guy that can play big minutes. Yeah, that's very wise, Chris. Mm-hmm. Coaching there. Don't rule that out. All right. So that <laughs> is, we've got one spot left. We've got one spot left. Chris Chris McQueen. Who's your number nine? Um, no, obviously, I, I knew this was coming. Um, I knew you were going to ask me who the number nine was. So I've had a minute to think about it. Um, and I think the first couple of choices are, are pretty obvious. You probably go Damien Cook or Cameron Smith, but I can't pick them. So um, despite the fact that I said I'm not going to pick a Tigers player, I am going to. And I'm going to pick Jacob Liddell. Um, obviously, over the last couple of years, I've played a fair bit of footy with him. And he's so quick out of dummy half. He can, he can read a game. Um, as well as anyone, um, he just knows when to when to pick that ball up and go. And I've seen him score plenty of tries from dummy half himself. So um, I, I think he's a really good attacking weapon. And um, you know he doesn't miss his job in defence as well. He's, he's a good strong defender, which is something you want because as a number nine, he's probably going to get targeted through the middle there. So um, yeah, another player that's that's an all round good player. That's a fair side. He's getting a bit getting a bit chirpy again now in his recovery, isn't he, Lids? Like he was a little bit quiet to begin with, but he's he's starting to pick back up now, isn't he? Well, have you yeah, seen, he the size, seen the size? Have you seen the size of his arms at the moment? He's massive. No <laughs> wonder he's chirpy. He's looking. His rig's looking outstanding. Yeah, nice. Well, that's a fair side, boys. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. We'll have to uh, run your dream team up against uh, Josh and Moses's in episode two. I think it's a pretty high standard you've got there. I think uh, that's certainly a side capable of. Like you said, there's certainly plenty of strike power there, but uh, also pretty capable of hanging on to win a game, I think. It's not a bad side, gents. Well done. Thank you. All right. Well, that's your coach. One more segment to come. It's called Do You Remember? Two players with big careers and plenty of highlights. We're just going to see how well they can remember their best moments right after this. That's a win. This NRL season, take it to the Neds level. Now you're listening to the Beyond the 80 podcast, proudly sponsored by Neds. And it's time to put these two rugby league legends, 400 games between them, and pretty much covered every position. I think we can call them legends. Chris Lawrence and Chris McQueen, time to put their memories to the test. Boys, I kind of, just before we begin, I'll throw out that you've played every position. I was having a look in just before we did do this. You pretty much have pretty much played nearly every position between you, bar fullback. Did either of you kind of spend any time at fullback at all or...? Um, no, I haven't. I reckon I might have mid game because I, I played a bit on the wing. I, th- I think maybe one game early on, perhaps. Yeah. When, but it, it might only be. I think the only proper position that I haven't properly played is probably hooker um, or front row. I reckon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. So you, I, I'm, I'm similar. I've never played. I've never played fullback. Um, my last year at the Titans, actually my last game for the Titans, we had a, a pretty serious injury crisis up there. So I wore the six on my back. Um, but yeah, hooker, I've never played hooker. I've played lock, the sort of front row. But yeah, it's pretty much fullback and hooker are the only positions. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. So so what you're saying is there's a fair few rugby league memories to go there. So what? here's how this game called Do You Remember is going to work. You're each going to get three questions that are going to get harder as they go along. And obviously, mm-hmm. one point if it's right and then... If the other person wants to steal, I mean, good luck, but it's because it's about, you know, your career. So not only if you know your own career very well, but if you know Chris McQueen's career very well, then, you know, you're doing pretty well. But yeah. what we've got, we've got, we've got the audio of these moments lined up as well. So we'll be able to see, we'll be able to see which one of you has got the better memory. All right. So, so what I might do is we might kick it off with youngest, right? Youngest first, Chris Lawrence. Oh, you just sneak in there ahead of Chris there. Youngest first. Yeah. All right. That's <laughs> going to say I have to bring that up, do you? <laughs> <laughs> that helps, helps a lot. <laughs> all right, all right. Question one. Here we go. Question one. It's time to knuckle down here. All right. So round six, 2009, Chris. I'm just going to jog your memory. West Tigers defeat the Melbourne Storm at Leichardt Oval. I'm sure you know the game. Yeah. Scores 10-6 with two minutes to go. And there's a little scrum on the 20-metre line and a little play down the short side. Do, do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember this. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, I, I, I do remember this moment, yep. Okay, all right. So the question is, 
Who threw you the pass? So it would be Benji Marshall. So um, I can remember this actually quite clearly because, yeah, we were, I think we said up, up eight, 10, uh, 10, 8 or something like that. Um, and it was only a couple of minutes to go. I'm assuming this would be the same game but uh, that I'm thinking of. But we had a scrum. Um, Benji's called a trick play down the short side. I've said no, cons- go the conservative, get to a kick, three minutes to go. He's just winked at me. I'm like, oh, he's going to run it. Short side play, no look past to me down the sideline. Um, and I go down and score the score a try. Is that right, all correct? Let's just check the audio of that. Well done, Chris. Well done, Chris. Yeah. Benji Marshall throwing the pass there. It's a fairly you know hard No, you know what? I didn't know the play and I didn't know that uh, that answer. But I would have guessed Benji. Come on. Yeah. That's, fair <laughs> that's, that's well, easy. Yeah, I know. Like I said, like I said, we'll get a little bit harder as we go along, all right? So, you know, yeah, we'll, just, yeah. we'll just see. We'll just see. All right. All right. Question two. Question two. Chris McQueen. Chris McQueen. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Your debut. Yep. South Sydney. Mm-hmm. What number did you wear on your debut? Um, was it 19? Now, this this one's tricky because there is no audio, so you're just going to have to trust me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what we can do, what we can do is we'll put a little social clip up of this. We'll just put the, we'll put the video up. We'll put a little video up. You're close, Chris, but it is number I feel, 20. I, it oh, it's 20. Number yeah, right. oh, see, I would, oh, oh, my second guess would have been 18. But yeah, 20, you're right. I'd... So were you named, you weren't named in that original side. How did you kind of come into the team then? Um, so yeah, obviously I wasn't named in the side and it's funny cause I was living with Jamie Simpson at the time. Um, and he was under an injury cloud. And so I didn't find out to captain's run that I was playing, but the whole week I knew that if he didn't play that I was going to play. So obviously there's the jokes all week. I'll kick him down the stairs or I'll poison his food or something. <laughs> um, but I think he knew a bit earlier in the week that he wasn't going to play. Um, but yeah, I didn't get told until captain's run that he was out and I was going to be in. So he didn't give you the heads up. He didn't say, mate, I'm no. Sure. Left no, not ball. even. Yeah, not even at home to um, you know to be a good bloke and give me the wink. Nothing. Didn't tell me. <laughs> so you're living with you're living with the guy whose spot you took in the team essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But he was he was all good the next week. So I sort of played that for that one game, and then I was back out of the team, um, and then through injury again, I played the last three games of the year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, you did all right in your debut. A little win, score a try on debut. It's not the worst debut out there, Chris, Chrissy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> all right, all right. Chris Lawrence, question, question two for you, question three overall. Who assisted the last try you scored in the NRL? So it's a bit of a tricky one because you've got to not only think what was the last try you scored, but you've then got to think who threw the pass or kick. I scored, uh, yeah, I scored last year. I think I only got one last year. <laughs> Would have been either, uh, it's either Benji or Brooksy, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I think it was a lead run. So I'm going to say Brooksy. Let's check the audio here. Oh, plays out the books. There goes very short Lawrence. Oh, that's a popular try. To the Tigers stalwart. Right in front of the fans. Yeah, that's there a good go. educated dress there. That's a good oh, the standard back row a try, lead run. <laughs> and yeah. the first answer was Benji, so it's probably not going to be Benji again. Yep, I know, so, so I've just calculated this on, that man. one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. All right, all right, I'm taking the feedback on board. I'll take the feedback on board, all right. <laughs> Chris McQueen, Chris McQueen, need yeah. to hit back here. I reckon you can do this one. Need to hit back here. All right. Okay. The 2004 team grand final. Obviously, Greg Inglis runs away to score that final try and, and start the celebrations. I'm sure you remember that incredibly well. Yep. It's a try, so there's a shot at goal. Mm-hmm. Who takes the attempt at goal? <laughs> no, that one's, that one's easy. It was Sam. Sam Burgess. His last, apparently his last game in the NRL. So they gave him the <laughs> kick and, um, and he missed it too. All right, well, we'll check the audio on that. Check the audio. <laughs> They're going to give Sam Burgess the conversion. His final touch of the football. 
Oh, that's that's bonus point striking, Chris. If you can yeah, throw it yeah. back, call it his final <laughs> touch. There you go. Yeah, I'll pay that. That's a fair call. Thank you. Level pegging. Well done. Yeah. You're you back, mate. You're back. All right, all right. <laughs> Last question each. Now, now these ones. I, I was trying to think about what's what's some pretty iconic moments from your career, and and I'm sure you've both been a part of, of several, but I, I tried to pick a couple that that are pretty iconic, and then tried to pick a bit of an obscure moment from it. Okay, that's that's yeah. that's what we're going with here. So, Chris, yeah. Barnes, your third and final question: Your 2006 debut. We've all seen that try of you down the sideline, and you're beating Sean Berrigan. That's the easy bit. All right, I, I don't know if you thought that was going to be the question, but that's not the question. It's from a Brisbane knock-on. Now, here's the real question. Who knocked it on? Mm. Yeah, that, yeah, that's tough. I, was, I thought you were going to say who's passing the ball. I was going to say Dean Collis. I know he's passing the ball. Oh, can you give it a hint? Was it a back or a forward? <laughs> well, look, I feel like... I've already got oh, no, a little no, bit yeah, from Chris McQueen on the standard. Of look, the I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I, I got, I got no, I got, I've got no idea. So okay, I'll, I'll be right. stab if you give us a back or a, I don't even know who half it's up. Yeah, I know right. some of the. So I'm gonna, yeah, okay, give us a back or a forward. Okay, it's a forward. It was a forward. Petro. Ooh, it wasn't Petro. It's right at the start of this. Right at the start of this clip, you, you got to listen right at the start. We won't. We might miss it. Stag. Yeah, right. Stag. Oh, there you go. Stag. No. Yeah. Well, there you go. You got me. David Stag. David Stag. So that was that was a bit of a tough one. That was a bit of a tough one. But, you know, obviously a pretty iconic moment there yeah. for you on debut. What about that? There Two guys go. not named in the... What about the similarities here? Two guys not named in mm. the 17. Both come in on the wing. Both play in their debut. Both get a wing. Jeez, look at that. That's not... That's try as well. Both score a try. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Well, Chris... Both, na- both named Chris. Both named Chris. Well, McQueen, <laughs> it all comes down to this. It all comes down to this. <laughs> And I, right. I saw this moment during the week, obviously, with, with South City Men to play the Roosters on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was probably one of the most incredible finishes we've seen to a game in rugby league. That 2012 game between the Rabbitohs and the Roosters. I'm sure you remember yeah. the moment well. Round 19. All right. Now, well, let's get to see how well you know it. Now, obviously, we know it ends with a try to Adam Reynolds. Yes. Here's the question. Mm-hmm. Who are the four players that get the ball before Adam Reynolds? <laughs> this again, this probably so this we'll is an easy with... question. I've watched it enough times. All right, so, right, well, oh, all right. right. So, so who's taking the hit up? Dave Taylor off the kickoff. Yep. And then he he passes it to me, and I run down the sideline and I throw it back on the inside for Nathan Merritt, and then he passes it to Isaac Luke, and then Isaac. Probably should have taken the tackle. In hindsight, glad he didn't. He just sort of throws it out the back and Adam Reynolds picks it up and scores. Jeez, that's very, very confident. Let's, we'll check the audio <laughs> here. We'll check the audio. He gives it to Taylor. He brings it back and gives it to McQueen. They're away. Merritt's there again. Here he is. Merritt. Merritt leaks up with Luke. Luke for the line. Keeps it alive. Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah. And the and the exact order as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, that's that's pretty good. I think that that deserves that deserves a point there. Well done. That's uh. What do we get to? Two all. Jesus, there's some. You've done well there, boys. You've done well there. I think it's only fair that we probably call it two all. Yeah, um, similarities. Happy with that one. <laughs> Just Why on not? that, Chris McQueen. Before we kind of wrap up, did you did you was that a set play? Did you know that was on? No, no, there was no set plays with Dave Taylor. He just did what he wanted. Um, <laughs> and the crazy thing is, and I guess this is just one of those things, just how set in their ways teams are. Dave Taylor was was standing at front row on our left, the Roosters' right. But on the other side, it was Nathan Peets. And he was a hooker, obviously, and he just got thrown back there. But they still just kicked straight off to Dave Taylor, who could pull anything out at any given time. So, um, you know, smart money's on kicking the ball to Nathan Peets. But they didn't, and that's what happened. There you go. One of the great comebacks. I mean, just quietly, two assists in the last two minutes is not too bad either, Chris McQueen. Yeah, yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> not bad. Well, two old boys, well done. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with your knowledge. Certainly uh, some pretty uh, clever boys there. Well, guys, thank you for your time today on the Beyond the 80 podcast. What's, uh, what's up on the training schedule for tomorrow? 
Um, well, based off our training schedule, that we've got got the day off. So, um, oh, about this? yeah, I know we've got the two two days um, we've done back to back today and uh, well yesterday and today, and um, then they've given us um, you know, tomorrow off to have two another couple of big training days. But um, might try and get in my routine and get up and, and do something light. I think I think I feel, feel a lot better getting up and getting moving in, in the morning. Actually, you know, made me feel a lot better and gave me a bit more energy. So I'll be getting up and just doing something. Like yeah, it's hard to have days off at the moment. Um, you know, a long day, not really being able to do anything. So for me, I'll probably just um, take the dogs for a walk. Um, just try to get out of the house for an hour or two. Um, but yeah, in terms of actual training, um, give the body a rest and get ready for Thursday and Friday. Too easy, gents. Well, thank you for your time today. Thank you again to for Neds for your support of the uh, Beyond the 80 podcast and to everyone for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back soon with episode two, which should be in your feed right now, funnily enough, and ready for you to play. Thank you for joining us and we'll catch you next time on the Beyond the B80 podcast. Mm-hmm.